Right around the same time I reviewed the Seiko bottle cap, I had an opportunity on Mass Drop to get a Seiko Baby Monster. And there was a choice between the orange one and this silver version, which has become known as the Ice Monster. Now, I thought the Ice Monster was much more interesting, although I had some concerns about its silver and blue color scheme. But once I got it in my hands, all of that quickly disappeared, which I probably shouldn't have even been concerned at all, as I went through something similar with Swatch's System Navy. Now, while these are two very different watches, they have a similar color scheme, and it's one that I very quickly warmed up to. In fact, I would easily say that the Ice Monster has become one of my favorites in a very short amount of time, so much so that I took it with me on a week's trip to Palm Springs. Now, I am very excited to share this watch with you because there's so much in it that Seiko got right. For the few that aren't familiar, Seiko Monsters are a popular line of dive watches. The design is rather aggressive, a rugged and industrial mix that you are either attracted to or repulsed by. The more affordable baby monsters also share that style, but they lack some of the ruggedness of the real monsters. Unlike the real monsters, they are not true dive watches, more like dive style watches as they only have 100 meters water resistance and lack a screw down crown. But for most people who only stick to desk diving, that's all you really need. As usual, let's start with the case, which is a good weight and feel to it as you hold it. The case design by itself can be polarizing, as there's a lot going on here. It's a mixture of brushed and polished stainless steel, with most of the polished areas being on the side and rear. Dimension-wise, the case is about 43.5 millimeters wide, and 47 millimeters with the crown, so it is a little larger, but not overly so. Lug to lug is a manageable 49 millimeters, and it sits about 13 millimeters tall, standard for a diver. And that's 13 millimeters hitting the edge of the bezel, not the crystal. Lug width is 22 millimeters, and it weighs a nice solid 193 grams, where 96 of that is the watch itself. There are a lot of angles to this thing, so there are definitely going to be some edges that you feel as you run your fingers across it but nothing too sharp, and overall the finishing is nicely done. I especially like how the case rises just a little on the top and bottom to create a little bit of a shroud for the bezel. And I really love how well everything is fitted. If you look, there's barely any clearance between the shroud and the bezel, maybe a millimeter. Now the bezel itself is also very aggressive, being reminiscent of a gear. It's unidirectional and I believe 120 click, with a rather nice, satisfying click as well. The bezel isn't flat, but also slopes down as it heads to the dial, which can make the watch look like a little bowl at certain angles. But more importantly, it also helps to protect the crystal, as the edges of the bezel are just a little bit higher. Now since this is a Seiko 5, both crystals are hard licks. The bezel has Arabic numerals engraved in it about every five minutes, with the first 15 in a navy blue and the rest in black. The dial itself is this light silver or ice silver metallic color with a sunburst effect. The hour indicators are rather oversized applied bars in white loom with a blue outline, which is a deviation from some of the classic monsters who have more of a shark tooth look. In this case, I think the bars give it a more normal balanced look. Now it's worth noting that the blue outline is a little bit of a lighter shade of blue than the rest of the watch. Beyond the bars is the chapter ring, in navy blue with hour and minute indicators in white. The hour indicators actually protrude out just a little bit, making a very nice effect with the indicators on the dial. While the chapter ring indicators are in a similar color, they aren't loomed. But not to worry, there is still plenty of loom to go around on here. The hands are in a typical dive style, with the hour hand being an oversized stubby arrow. The hour and minute hands are in white with a charcoal black outline. The white itself is a slightly different shade than the hour indicators, almost a, a little bit of a beige. Which at first I didn't like, 
but as I wore it, I realized that it adds a little bit of contrast and really helps in reading it. The charcoal black outline is also brilliant against the silver backdrop. The second hand is a blue arrow, but in a lighter blue that matches the outline of the hour indicators. Now I simply love the hands on this watch, and I love the small details that you first don't notice. The minute hand goes all the way out to the chapter ring and has a minimal amount of clearance between itself and the raised indices, maybe half a millimeter. The second hand, while just a little shorter, has its arrowhead and loomed part going right to the edge of the indices on the dial. And I also love how the hands look when they overlap, where that same arrowhead is the exact width of the loomed part of the minute hand. And it also lines up as an extension of the hour hand, something you can easily see in the dark with the loom, where the hour hand seems to be missing its tip, yet when they overlap, the second hand perfectly lines up to complete it. Overall, I love the design of the Ice Monster. Now, while I had some doubts when I first saw pictures, once I got it in my hand, well, there's just something captivating about the silver and blue on it. Now, while I like the look of some orange divers, I'm not really sure they're me. So what I love about the Ice Monster is that it's still different and gives a good wrist presence, yet it's not screamingly so like some others. It's still relatively normal, which fits me perfectly. The day and date are displayed at the right, and are nicely framed in a steel coloring which matches the case. Also at the three are the crown guards, with a very textured crown. Now as I said before, it's not a screw down crown. But just like the bottle cap, this Seiko 5 has the newer 4R36 movement, something I wish all Seiko 5s had, so it does have hacking and hand winding. Now with that movement, you get a standard beat rate and close to 40 hour power reserve. And as if I already did not love this watch enough for its design, accuracy wise it's sitting about negative 4 seconds a day, which I think is absolutely fantastic for a sub $200 watch. I've already showed a quick shot of the loom, but let's talk about it a little more. The loom is fantastic, which you would expect from a Seiko diver. The only thing I would improve is if there was a little bit of loom at the top of the bezel. Now one thing to note is that even though the hour indices are in white, in bright sunlight, sometimes there's a little bit of a green hue to them, just from all that loom. The Ice Monster comes with a decent solid link bracelet and a signed push button clasp. It wears nicely, and I like its mix of polished and brushed steel that match the case. And while that bracelet looks good on it, that silver dial is striking with a number of other straps and absolutely looks fantastic on a NATO. With this blue one from Barton being my favorite, although the silver one is a close second. Just be aware that the clearance between the lugs and the spring bars is rather tight here. So on some thicker NATOs, you will probably need some bent or curved spring bars. Although a NATO will add a few millimeters to its height, which does make the watch feel a little tall. But I actually took it with me for a week while I visited Palm Springs and never had a problem. I even took it hiking at the top of Mount San Jacinto. Now you can regularly find the Ice Monster for just under $200, depending on where and who actually has them in stock. It can vary, and I think on Mass Drop it was close to $150. Which, like the Seiko bottle cap, brings up an interesting question. If you want a Seiko diver around that price, the SKX is the obvious one to look at. But if you don't actually need the 200 meters water resistance, would you be better off with a Seiko 5 dive style watch? While you lose some of the ruggedness, you gain a newer movement with hacking and hand winding. Now the overall design of the monsters and baby monsters can be quite polarizing, which is one of the things I like about it, that they're different and just not another subby homage. And with the ice monster specifically, there's nothing I really don't like about it. Now if I could change anything, it would be to turn it into a real monster and a real diver. But for the price, I really can't complain. And for whatever reason, I am completely taken with its color scheme. 
It's different without being too different. It's more quirky than strange. So for me, the ice monster is definitely a keeper and it's not going anywhere. Now, as usual, let me know in the comments what you think about the ice monster or monsters in general. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you on the next one.